I'm Edie Lodge and I'm here inside the Hub Culture studio. It's Davos 2020. Really pleased now to welcome Morag Watson, Chief Digital Innovation Officer at BP. Thanks for coming along. Thank you. So tell me, what are you doing at Davos? So I'm at Davos because I've never been here before. Welcome. And um, it's an amazing place. And really what I'm looking for is uh, to get stimulus and connections and to really think about um, how what I do fits into the bigger world and, um, and grow that a bit more, I guess. All right, so tell me what it is that you do. What does digital innovation mean at BP? So digital innovation can mean lots and lots of different um, things, but specifically in the context of where I work, it's um, we are looking at the emerging digital technologies that are not yet commercial, and so things that are sometimes just seen as science fiction, quite mm -hmm. frankly, and we have fun with them. Um, but we have fun within the context of how could this um, technology actually develop? What's what's our widest imagination of mm -hmm. where it could go, and um, and then dial that back into and what impact could that possibly have uh, either on our current business or our future business or on the world that we live in because actually the world's full of our customers, our partners, our employees. You know, these are the people we're going to have to work with. So we need to be thinking about how that all plays out. All right, so give me some examples of those innovations, the things that you're already starting to work with. So um, there's some main themes. Our, our, our big ones are the um, next generation computing, which quantum goes- Quantum computing? So quantum's in mm -hmm. there, amazing. That'll mm -hmm. be here sooner than you know, it'll be in a quantum leap. Okay. Um, and uh, uh, biocomputing. What's biocomputing? Well, um, it's still emerging, but how we hold it is actually using things like DNA to do mm -hmm. storage, right? Because you can actually mm -hmm. store a lot more data in a very small, tiny yep. piece, and that would use less energy, hopefully, mm -hmm. at the end of the day. But the, all the way through, also, we think about where bio and humans kind of meet. And mm -hmm. so if you start thinking about it, you've got things like Fitbits, yeah, yeah, today. Well, imagine how if that actually just merges and becomes part of your body or if you have enhancements to your mm -hmm. body that are... So sort of human augmentation. Yeah, human augmentation where bio meets, um, mm -hmm. the, the, where digital meets the human in fact. Mm -hmm. yeah. And how could that help your business? So that's a good question. I mean, lots of times we're, we're operating in the area where we don't actually know what we don't know. Mm -hmm. um, but you can imagine a future where actually you had a, a, an enhanced worker um, that was a lot safer out in, in, in the field, for instance, mm -hmm. or that um, was getting new capabilities, new knowledge straight into his cortex so mm -hmm. that or they could... Cortex. Or her cortex, mm -hmm. absolutely. Um, or that, um, you know, was... Um, you know, able to call on other people or do do just different things. I mm -hmm. mean, um, yeah, so it just could be a completely different world. So, and you already do that a little bit with AR, augmented reality, and virtual reality too, yeah. right? So we how do. does that work? So AR, VR, um, still kind of um, at the bleeding edge of being adopted, mm -hmm. um, but right now we use it for remote assist. So um, you have uh, a worker in a field, he comes across a problem, and um, he could actually get uh, real-time help from remotely, and the, the remote help could actually see what they were doing and actually guide them. Mm -hmm. so that's a possible way you could use it. Very cool. Yeah. All right, what about jellyfish robots? <laughs> jellyfish robots. Well, this is the ultimate in having flexi-form robots. Mm -hmm. and if you think about it, jellyfish are small, they're underwater, they can see things we can't, or they could go places that we can't necessarily, they've got their own energy. Mm -hmm. So um, they don't necessarily have any intelligence that we know about. Right. Of course, could always learn more. Right. Um, but how about if you were to use that as a, as a, as a way to form a robot and mm. actually use that kind of thinking of how you could get into small spaces and how you could see different things and have an energy source. Wouldn't that be cool? Yeah, very cool. So when are they coming? I don't know. All right, cool. Morag Watson from BP, thanks so much for stopping by the Hub Culture Studio and I'm Edie Lush.